Welcome everybody to the first lesson. Today we'll be going over math terms, properties, expressions, and equations. And the perfect square say that I am capable of doing difficult things. So let's get started. First, I'd like to go over some basic math terms, which are operations. Our operations are the words that we use in order to solve equations. Our first one is going to be addition. Now, what are some of the words that you see that tell you, I need to add this problem? You'll see the word add, sum, plus, increase, So for subtraction, we have subtract, decrease, minus, less, difference, take away, and there are many others, but these are the main words that you will be seeing. Words that we see and tell us. Product, by, times, in groups of. And then our last operation is division. Keywords for division are divide, quotient, goes into, split, average, and equal parts. These are words that you're going to be looking for when you are mainly solving word problems. These will help you figure out which operation you need to do, adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Please keep this paper in a handy area so that you can use this throughout your webinars. All right, now let's look at our basic properties. And for our basic properties, we're going to be going over three of them. We have our commutative property, associative, and distributive. Now, our commutative property, you got to think it comes from work commute or to move around. And you have two different ways of doing that through addition and multiplication. The addition way is when you have two numbers are added, and the sum is the same regardless of the order in which the numbers are added. So, for example, we have A plus B or we could think of that as B plus A, and both of them would come out to be the same answer. Now let's fill out uh, some of these problems that we have here. We have three plus five equals eight, or we could write that as five plus three equals eight. And then we have six minus five equals one, or you could write that out as negative five plus six equals one. Both of these are written differently, but telling us the same thing. And right here, I want you to write your own example. Now we look at multiplication, same thing. It's when two numbers are multiplied together, the product is the same regardless of the order in which the numbers are multiplied. So we have A times B, is the same thing as B times A. So we look at our problem here. Three times five equals 15. We can write that as five times three, and it's a, it will also equal 15. You have six times negative five equals negative 30, or you can write that as negative five times six will equal negative 30. 
as well. I want you to write your own example. I want you, I want you to give it a try as well. Now we have our associative property. Associative comes from the word associate or to group. Now it's also separated into the addition and multiplication. So for addition is when you have three or more numbers are added, the sum is the same regardless of the way in which the numbers are grouped. So for example, you have A plus B plus C, or in parentheses A plus B plus C. Um, in this example, we have six plus um, parentheses four plus three equals 13, or we can rearrange those numbers with the groupings and do parentheses six plus four, plus three, and that will also equal 13. Or you have nine plus negative five plus two equals six. We can also rearrange that grouping and group together nine plus negative five plus two will also give us the answer of six. Now I want you to write your own example of associate property using addition. Same thing with multiplication, is when you're using three or more, uh, numbers are multiplied, uh, the product is the same regardless of the way in which the numbers are grouped. In this case, if we do A times B times C, you can group that as A times B, times C will give you the same answer. So for example, six times in parentheses four times three gives us 72. We can regroup that and do six times four times that by three. This way will also give us 72. You also have five times negative two times one equals negative 10. We can regroup that as well to parentheses five times negative two, then times all of that by one. It will still give us our answer of negative 10. Now, our last property is our distributive property. Our distributed property, you gotta think of the keyword distribute or even to share, right? Is the sum of two numbers times a third number is equal to the sum of each additive times a third number. Really what that's saying, if we have A, then parentheses B times C, that A is gonna be distributed into each um, letter inside of our parentheses. So we get A times B plus A times C. Let's look at it with numbers. We have five parentheses seven plus two, and we know that equals 45. For a distributed property that is distributed, that five is distributed to each number, so it's five times seven plus five times two will give me the answer of 45. And we look at our last problem of two parentheses six minus four equals four. The distributed property distributes that two into each number. So we have to do two times six minus two times four. In both ways would give me an answer of four. I also want you to provide me an example of your own at the bottom. Now, if you refer to the back page, there are some problems to help you work on and uh, deciding which 
uh, the uh, following statements are relating to your commutative, commutative associative distributed property or just show me that uh, you understand. In addition to the properties that Mr. Cameron just showed you, in eighth grade, you're also going to be using the identity property of addition, also known as the additive identity, which states for any number A, the sum of A and zero is A. So here we have some examples, just A plus zero equals A, two plus zero equals two, zero plus three equals three. In a nutshell, zero added to anything gives you that same number. The next property, the additive inverse, states that a number and its opposite are, are additive inverses of each other. And basically, if you add two numbers together and their sum is zero, they're additive inverses. So here we have a plus negative a, and that gives you a sum of zero. Three plus negative three equals zero, and four minus four equals zero. Now, of course, this one is also an additive inverse because if you change this to addition, this next number, the four that follows it, would become a negative four. And so then it would be the opposite of the four. Next property we have is the identity property multiplication, also known as the multiplicative identity. And this states that for any number a, the product of a and one is a. So a times one is a, one times a is a, one times 14 is 14, 14 times one is 14. In a nutshell, any number times one is itself. Next up, we have the multiplicative property of zero. And this states for any number a, the product of a and zero is zero. So here are some examples. A times zero is zero, zero times a is zero, four times zero is zero, and zero times four is zero. So in a nutshell, if you're multiplying by zero, your product will be zero. And then we have uh, another fun one here. The multiplicative inverse, and that's also known as the reciprocal, states that for every number a divided by b, where a and b are not equal to zero, there's exactly one number, b divided by a, such that the product of a over b is equal to, times b over a is equal to one. And so for those of you that aren't familiar with finding the reciprocal, you're just basically going to take the number and flip it. So if you had one half, the reciprocal of one half would be two over one. And if you had a negative number, an integer, negative four fifths would be the reciprocal of that would be five over negative four. So here are some examples. A over B times B over A equals one. Another one, four fifths times five fourths equals one. And negative four fifths times five over negative four equals one. Okay, let's talk more math. We're gonna talk expressions and equations. I always compare this to English because we've got to use the English language to get to our math problems. How do we change an English phrase, which in math is called an expression, or a sentence in math called an equation into something that looks like a math problem? English phrases really don't have much meaning. Like if I say the sky, what do you know about the sky? Nothing, correct? Well, math phrases are a little like that too. There's like no end to it. It doesn't mean anything. Here are some examples of what a math phrase looks like. W plus N. Okay, what do I do with that? Unless I give you a value for W and N, you can't do anything with it. 5X. Okay. 3 minus N. 150 plus N. Q. These are phrases. An expression contains at least one variable, which you also know as an unknown, and it may have mathematical operations. Look at the examples I gave you just above. The operation here is addition. You have two variables and you're adding them. We all know that when we have a variable with a coefficient, that means multiply. This symbol means subtract. This is addition, and this one doesn't have a mathematical operation. It's just a number, in this case, a letter. So 
let's work some magic and change these English phrases into expressions. Miss Renee gave you a math, in math terms that come in handy at this point. Sorry about this, guys. How would you like to write the following into a math expression? Seven times a number or N times seven. Look at your phrases, your terms. Times means multiply, does it not? So we could write this as seven times a number. But really, when you get into upper math, we no longer put that little cross mark. We just write it 7n. Here, second example, minus, we know is subtraction. It tells us 4 minus y. The word quotient is our clue here. That means we're dividing something. So I put my fraction bar because I know I'm going to divide negative 9 by y. You getting the point? We're taking English phrases and making them into math. Twice a number minus 13. What does twice mean? I think Miss Renee told you that means multiply. How many times? Two times, correct? And a number. We've already said how to write multiplication. Minus means subtract and then 13. Now this next one is a little bit trickier because you have the term less than, which means what? Subtraction, right? But when you have it written like this, five less than, four times a number. Well, four times a number we can write as 4n, correct? What we have to do now is we have to reverse the numbers. The 4n goes to the beginning, the 5 goes to the end. So the 5 will come after your negative sign, excuse me, after your subtraction sign, and the 4n comes before. 5 less than 4 times a number. Remember that little trick, less than, and even more than, you flip the numbers. Here's another one. Two-thirds, a number D to the third power. Well, two-thirds we know is a fraction, right? So we're having two-thirds of a number. Look at your terms to the third power. You can also reverse these. Change a math expression into a written word, written words. Two times a number. I gave you a simple one, but you understand that when you see an expression, let's say 2x minus 3, Two times a number, minus three, you could write, minus, excuse me, minus three. That means this. We all know that every unit that we have has word problems. And I know you dread these, okay? But read the problem, not once, not twice, three times. And then when it starts to make some sense to you, start putting your terms and your numbers together. So here is a problem. Tickets to the water park cost $53 per person. Write an expression that shows the total cost of tickets for a group of your friends to go to the park. So start asking yourself some questions. How many people are in your group? Well, the problem didn't give us that information. 
When you don't know a number, that becomes your unknown or variable. If you have to ask yourself or say to yourself, I don't know, you have a variable there. I say that the number of people I will represent by a variable P, I get to pick the letter that I use because it didn't tell me which one to use. So my expression should be 53P, the cost times the number of people. Let's try this one. It's, it's two of them in one. Jill and Kyle get paid per project. Jill is paid $25 per project plus $10 per hour. Kyle is paid $18 per project and $14 per hour. What is your variable and what does that variable represent? So we call it a let statement. We have to let some variable equal something. What is it we don't know here? Do we know how much she gets paid for per project? Yes. Do we know how many uh, dollars she makes per hour? Yes. Do we know how many hours she's going to work? No, I don't know that. What is that number? I don't know, so I'm giving it a letter H because that's my unknown and it represents ours. Kyle is paid $18 for project, so we know about that. He's paid $14 per hour. Do we know how many hours Kyle works? No. So the H stands for hours in both of these. So let's look at Jill's expression. Jill walks in the door. They hand her $25 to come in, right? Because she's going to do this project. She's also going to get paid $10 per hour, which means multiply. So Jill's expression is $25 plus $10 per hour. Following that, Kyle's expression is then $18 per project plus $14 an hour. Later on, when we get into word problems, we will have more to do with Kyle and Jill because we're going to actually work this problem. But for right now, all we're doing is writing expressions. Let's go to equations now. Equations in English form a complete thought. Look at my sky now. The beautiful blue sky was free of clouds. Math sentences are called equations. They have two expressions that are equivalent or equal to one another. Here are some examples of what it might look like. Notice each one of them has this symbol here, which completes the sentence and is called an equals mark. That's normally the word is, equivalent to, etc. One expression or the first expression is equal to the second expression. Terms such as is, equal to, is equivalent to, mean an equal sign is used and it makes an equation. We will not be solving any equations today. We are going to read the English sentences and set them up in a math form. Write an equation for each of the following. And I have done this for you already. A number increased by 7 point and 9 tenths is 8 and 3 tenths. Here I'm underlining. I know I have an addition problem. I know the is is an equal mark. A number, what is the number? I don't know, we named it N. Increased by 7.9 is equal to 8.3. It completes the full thought. You're going to be able to work this when you get into equ equations and you will be able to so solve it. Well, what is N? So let's look at the next one. 
is is your equal sign. What does the term sum mean? It means add. 17, look, I'm following it exactly, is the sum of a number plus six. So I created the equation from taking my English phrase sentence into a math sentence. And as you can see, 17 equals n plus 6. Here is one with that less than, again, what did we say? These two numbers, this number comes here, and this number goes behind. So 8 less than a number, we don't know what the number is, but we know we're going to subtract 8 from it, is equal to 19. How would you write this equation? Quinn opens a bank account in a three-month period. He deposits $75.50 and $55.25. He also withdraws $25.15 and $18.65. At the end of the three months, his balance is... Okay. Start asking questions. Do we know how much money Quinn opened his account with? Absolutely not. They didn't give us that information. So that becomes your unknown. And I said, because we're talking money, I'm going to go with an M for that. So let's look at the keywords that gave us hints to the mathematical operations needed to construct, construct this equation. We had the word deposit. or deposits. This means addition. Withdrawals means subtract. We know is is an equal sign. And we know that M, we're going to let M equal amount, original amount. Okay, so M is the initial deposit. So now your equation should look something like, we started with, and this should be a little M, variables are always little M. This one is a little bit dumb on the computer, so you'll have to live with it. All right, M, a deposit of $75.50, a deposit of $55.25, a withdrawal of $25.15 and a withdrawal of $18.65. At the end of the three months, his total is $2. Oh no. $210.85. So this is what your equation should have looked like before you can solve this problem. Here is a little bit of a challenge. Set this, set up this equation. 14 less than three times a number is five more than half of the number. Okay, let's underline the, the terms that mean operations. Less than times more than half because that's going to tell us something. And then, of course, here is our equals mark. So I, I'm going to put my equals marks there. What did I tell you about the terms less than and more than? You are flipping the numbers, right? And that goes over here. So the numbers become flipped. So in this one, three times a number is going to be my first problem, my first term. 14 less than that, so 3n minus 14. More than also means we are flipping the numbers. So one half of the number, one half the number n plus 5. Did you get that? 
I hope so. When you're working problems, please ask yourself questions. And you'll see how this magic works. What is my variable? Do I have an unknown? What letter am I going to give this unknown? What terms can I change into math operations? And have I used all the information given to me? If you follow those steps, you probably will start to get how to take an expression or a word problem and make it into a math sentence. Worksheets have been posted so you can practice. Have a good day. We are the Perfect Squares signing off. See you next week. Bye.